Alright people, so here we are in the Mark 7.5 GTI. Uh, I thought we'll start off the video on the road first. I know it's kind of like a running joke, we only do MQB cars on the channel, but I have done a few sort of varied cars lately. But yeah, this is a totally standard GTI. It's also a manual as well. I've been quite looking forward to driving a manual MQB because there's hardly any on the road. Everyone seems to go for DSGs. Um, so far it's very smooth and nice, but the main angle I'm taking with the video today is sort of discussing whether the GTI is still like um, a hot hatch you should consider. Uh, because nowadays the choice is just huge, like the amount of hot hatches you can get now as opposed to say five or six years ago, the choice has just gone really big. So the GTI is still a contender in terms of like there's certain things that this can do very well that others can't. But yeah, we'll have a bit of fun with it, we'll explore it, see how it's like. I also want to compare it to the R in a way, I know the R is a lot more expensive but there are people who will probably crush up a newer GTI with an older second hand R. So we will make that comparison. Alright, so I'll just hop out here, give you guys a walk around of the car. We'll go over the exterior first and I'll show you guys some of the interior touches at the usual little spot. Very noisy here, but we'll try and get all the points in. So Mark 7.5 GTI, as you can see, finished it black. Five door, some manual as well, like I showed you. This is a relatively standard car, but as you can see, facelift. So it's got the new front bumper, the lights as well. The red detailing is very nice in the GTI. Um, bit more sporty looking than the R you could say excluding stuff like the bumpers and the exhaust standard wheels and we've got the red brake calipers too the red GTI badging as well it's a very smart sleeper car you could say uh, it does blend in if you wanted to but it still has a nice few sporty touches to it of course move around the back we've got these facelift rear lights with the sort of swooping indicators like the Audi style ones twin exhaust does make a decent sound it's not over the top uh, like I said, this is a facelift, so it's got a nice few touches. So interior is very nice as well with the active info display. I'll show you guys that in a second. But generally the GTI is a bit of a um, sleeper car, but also if you know, you kind of know because it has that sort of appeal. Um, it doesn't shout about its performance. It's more of a, um, a car that you get in to just enjoy and drive. You can drive it relaxed or you can drive it fun depending on your sort of mood. This car has got bridge stones on it as well. They seem to be gripping fairly well. Uh, this is a non-performance pack, so it's got 230 horsepower. The performance pack gets you 245 horsepower, I believe. And also you get a front diff as well, uh, like the GTI Club Sport we did a few months ago. Um, they have apparently discontinued the standard GTI like this, so um, you can only get the performance one now. I mean, GTIs generally are sort of cars that don't really shout about what their performance is. Um, it's more of an all-rounder. Of course, now you got the R with its four exhaust and stuff like that, and the Haldex and everything for that. A bit more of a um, aggressive driving experience. But I wouldn't sort of neglect the GTI so far. Like I said at the start, the uh, point of the video was to discuss if the GTI is still like a relevant choice. Um, of course, the GTI will always have its place. It's a very iconic name and badge. Of course, it's not going anywhere. But we are still going to take it on a few more twisties. It is kind of what I expected so far because, you know, I've done a lot of MQBs on the channel. I had an S3 myself for two years as well. So um, the manual does add a new dimension to it. Um, I am enjoying doing all the rev matching. But yeah, what we'll do, um, we'll show you guys interior. And yeah, we'll head back out on the road. Very nice car inside. Um, facelift has a nice few touches. Uh, we'll just hop in here because it is quite noisy out there. Um, so as you can see straight away, got this nice textured pan here. With the red ambient lighting it's a solid cabin the golfs always are especially the 7.5 with the added amp active info display um, red detailing as well of course manual box and all the sort of infotainment system there with the touch screen heated seats as well it's a very solid cabin there's nothing really to fault a golf interior it is what it is flat bottom steering wheel with the red stitching the gate here has red stitching as well and of course the tartan seats if you can see and um, i am sitting on the seat but i'll show you the back seat i'm personally a fan uh, some people like leather options but i think that the uh, tartan adds a bit of character and um, we'll close the door here of course this is a digital display it's a bit different to the audi one but it's like all the map and stuff right so we've got the gear and speed and um, we've got consumption and range efficiency okay so efficiency is one of the other thing i want to highlight as well before we get back out on the road um the club sport that we had a few months ago to do a video on and um, of course that has the golf r engine but i found that if you compared it directly to the r uh, the fuel was a lot it was a lot more fuel efficient uh, so that is one other thing to consider if you are buying this car in more of a um 
you know real world perspective in terms of you know you want to know how much your fuel bill and stuff is gti even though it is a two liter they do drink a lot less than the r and the s3 um we were driving that car all day as well and it was just hardly drinking anything so i imagine this is even better what we are going to do now we are going to head back on the road and get a few more driving points in yeah just see how the gti's look right so back on a more of a twisty road this is the identical road we drove that Cooper 300 on a few weeks ago, so very familiar with it, of course. Um, straight away, it's noticeable how good the ride is on this. Uh, it doesn't get thrown off. I know I say that about a lot of the cars, but genuinely, the ride is just really good, so you have to highlight it. Um, it's a positive of the car. Um, very smooth, progressive car. Of course, a manual has just a nice dimension to it, like I said a couple of times already, but yeah, you just want to keep blipping down shifts like that. I know you probably can't hear too much, it is quite a refined or quiet exhaust you could say but a bit of a sound act to go in. Uh, like I said ESC Sport is in is engaged now so put a lot for a bit more slip. It's on like standard Bridgestone pretenders so you can hear hangs with the apex very well. Second gear. It's still a very fun car man. You can't define this car but it's um, on paper figures. Um, if you do that you might might not think too much of it uh, but once you get behind the wheel it's a nice all-rounder as well as being fun on this back road because this is a sort of um, angle I like to take with the videos anyway I want to sort of highlight um, you know how a car is like taking it on a weekend drive like it's a weekend today on a couple of local back roads this is how it's like um, normal people don't take their car on tracks every day so um, of course if you want something like that then you want some fully stripped out car you wouldn't buy a car like this anyway but this is a car you could take to work uh, you can sit in traffic um, put this put some music on relax and if you want to just come out here point to sport deals with it totally fine i am very surprised at the way this thing hangs in the corners um, especially on the tires that it's on the bridgestone pretenders so i'm not normally a fan bit of wheel spin there uh, you could definitely feel that um, the lack of a diff there for a second it started spinning up the inside wheel because it is the brakes so mimicking it not like an actual LSD but nothing too crazy uh, it's not gonna just back off the gas slightly and you'll be okay um, of course this is one car you're not gonna get loads of excessive DSG overrun or sorry bangs and exhaust overrun like you would get with a few of the cars we've done lately but I don't that's part of the appeal of a GTI is that it's not in your face even the styling as well the ride is just very impressive I mean you guys should be able to see from the shot as well how smooth it is uh, compared to some of the other cars we've done recently where you can see the camera just judging everywhere like this is just this is quite a bumpy road don't get me wrong it's a bumpy road um, you don't feel much of it through the cabin though uh, this thing is on the standard 18s I mean, the way he just sits there, no fuss at all. And the on-road performance is more than enough, more than enough. First gear. Nah, very quick, man, very quick. It's enough that what you need for a, a bit of fun on the weekend. That's the main thing I'd say. The grunt mainly comes in at 4,000 RPM though. These have a smaller turbo than the R, even though this is an EA AAA engine. There are a few differences, a few of the internal bits. Um, the R has a bigger IS38 turbo, but then you have got the Haldex, so you're adding a bit of weight as well. These things also I'd like to highlight as well. Um, if you're looking at the full package, uh, they drink a bit less fuel as well. Because of course I had the S3 for two years, which essentially is an R. Um, and um, to give perspective to it, I had a GTI Club Sport, that review video I did, and that has that's essentially a front wheel drive variant of the R, uh, same engine and we fully drove it all day like as we wanted to and the needle barely moved so this would be even more efficient than that um, just the way it's set up is a lot less aggressive you type jack <laughs> <laughs> that's very i had to point that out you don't see that every day but yeah it's um to ensure and fuel um this is obviously going to be a lot more obtainable for a lot more people uh, but it's still a great car it doesn't like i don't think that i know some people might say that you know the gti might be a bit plain for them but i don't know uh, to me i've driven quite a few mqb cars so i can't give an accurate comparison it's not like all about having a 400 horsepower five pot you know like oh you've got to have like since rs6 going past you don't need to have 600 horsepower in your, in your life all the time um, so 
I say the GTI is still a relevant contender, definitely. Nowadays you got stuff like Hyundai i 30 ns and this is so much choice now. So you're kind of spoiled for your choice in a way. I was a choice twice there, but yeah, there is a for the buyer. Yeah, there's just so much choice in the market now. Nah, this has got loads of grip once you get up there. Loads of grip. And of course, these are very tunable as well. So even though it has got a smaller turbo, you can crack 300 horsepower with these. Um, if you want to swap out the turbo, you can do that as well. Uh, there's people out there with crazy power GTIs. I'd argue though, if you're going to add more power though, you'd rather have the performance pack diff. Um, there are people out there who have done it without the diff, but I think if you're going to stick with this, genuinely, the way it sticks to Benz, I am quite surprised. Um, um, considering some bridge storms as well, which I'm not a fan of. I them on my S3 and it just worked good, but... It's a very nippy car, very nippy car. It just doesn't, doesn't make a fuss about itself. That's what I'm, the main highlight. It just gets on with it, which is the way a golf does it. So, oh, this manual is good, you know. Now, this is a very capable car, and it invites you to do speed as well. It actually invites you to do it. Um, if this had a DSG, I probably wouldn't be having as much fun because it's just you know sitting here pulling the paddles. At the start of the video, I was looking for the paddles. I'm not gonna lie, but genuinely I'm having a lot of fun in this. I'm not just saying it for the video because I love MQB VAG cars. Right people, so what I think we'll do, uh, we'll wrap up the video here. Um, that was a good feel for the GTI 7.5. I know a lot of you guys did request a totally standard GTI. Um, I'm properly enjoyed this thing. The gearbox definitely adds a layer of enjoyment too. So, if you're in the market for one and you don't mind having a uh, sort of a manual instead of a DSG, I would recommend it. It makes the car a bit more fun. Uh, you rely less on the BHP figures, and of course, this is a very nippy car. Um, I want to stress that this is a quick car. Um, for most purposes, it's more than enough. But anyway, guys, enough of that rambling. Make sure to subscribe if you like the video. Yeah, I'll see you in the next one.